Well, here we go. Got an Iowa tag in my pocket. It's April 21st. Just got back from Western Nebraska. Had a great trip out there chasing Merriam's. Was able to shoot one with my bow. Got one with a shotgun. And now I have a couple days here in Iowa before I head down to Missouri to film Aaron down there. And then he gets married at the end of the month. So it's an exciting time of the season to say the least. And we spend a lot of time on the road traveling to turkey hunt, but we always look forward to getting back to Iowa. Such great turkey hunting opportunities here. I'm hoping to get Mindy out to hunt some more. Uh, our friend Jim Reiser is coming into town and he's got a muzzleloader shotgun tag. So I'm real excited about hunting with him. Iowa has a lot of great turkey hunting opportunities. There's a good amount of public land. A lot of it's you know, well-managed, high quality habitat. And there's not a ton of hunting pressure during the turkey season. So anyways, if you're ever thinking about turkey hunting Iowa, I highly recommend it. Probably the easiest thing to do is just to get the Outdoors Iowa app. It's got all the hunting information, regulations, seasons, uh, application periods, also has harvest registration, sunrise, sunset. I mean, it's got pretty much everything you're gonna need to get started and to get hunting in Iowa. So anyways, like I said, I've got a couple days to hunt here and my plan to start things off this afternoon is to get out in the kayak, I'm gonna go down a stretch of river and just get out every few hundred yards, call, try to strike something up. A lot of times when we're hunting the higher ground, we see birds down in the river bottom. So that's the, that's the plan. Try to get at them with the kayak today and just enjoy a beautiful day here in Iowa. Got a couple days to try to get it done and then it's on to Missouri from there. That is a beautiful sight right there. Dang it, I'd love to be in the middle of that action though. Four strutters, five toms total. Looks like some hens and some jakes, just a mixed group of turkeys. Guess I should have been over on that side tonight instead of working down the river. That group of longbeards may be that group of jakes that I was seeing in here last year. We saw them a number of different times. They're running toms around, but I just decided to hang out and watch and see what these turkeys do and come up with a game plan for the morning. And right now it actually looks like the group is splitting up. The hens and the jakes are heading to the timber to the south. Those toms are heading to the timber back to the north. Yeah, that's what they're going to do. Longbeards are hot-footing it to the timber back to the north. Hens and the jakes are heading south. Got some geese, there's deer feeding up in the field above them. I mean, it's just, that's what I love about this spot. There's just so much wildlife, so much habitat diversity. Stretching the wings out. Getting ready to fly up here soon. So the past two years in a row, I've shot toms on the very high point of that hill. And you can see why it's a good spot. Because this is, oftentimes, this is what happens. You got different groups of birds roosted in these blocks of timber. These turkeys just consistently move back and forth between those blocks of timber. They, they also like to spend time down in this river bottom, which is why I came down in here today with the kayak. They've got the river bottom habitat, they've got the, the oak timber, they've got ag fields, cattle pasture. You know, everything basically comes together in one small area, and that's why there's turkeys in here consistently year after year. But definitely going to try to slip in there in the morning, you know, four toms by themselves. <laughs> Man, I'm fired up. I can't wait to get in there in the morning.
This little guy's having a rough go of it this morning. <laughs> He's up in this old oak tree here trying to access the cavity. I'd get in there, I'm sure he just wants to take a nap. But apparently all of the entrances, and he's tried at several of them, are too small for him to fit. <laughs> he spent he spent probably 10 minutes chewing away the bark at one of them, trying to get in that one. Got about halfway in, but apparently his hips were too wide. Couldn't make that one. And now he is completely exhausted himself, and he's just clinging to the tree. First, I was just gonna grab a quick cutaway. And then, uh, and then it kinda got interesting and I got invested in his struggle. Trying to get into the cavity of the tree and just take a nap, that's all he wants, it's just a nap. set up here this cluster of willow trees oh, there's turkeys right there looks like all hens but it looks like there's a male bird I can see a redder head it didn't look real big though so I'm assuming it's a Jake probably that same group of hen and hens and Jakes I saw last night here. This morning, those birds are roosted a long ways from where I saw them yesterday evening on that field. But they're tearing it up back down here along the river bottom. I'm up in this patch of timber adjacent to the river bottom here. It's absolutely tore up with sign back in here. Pretty open woods. I mean, just tore up. No doubt they come through here probably every day. set up here. Start calling. There they are. Just gobbled right there. They are close.
<laughs> oh man. Yep. I'm a little bit shook up on that one. That's those four gobblers I've been after for the last two days. They are a long ways from where they were roosted yesterday and from where I saw them last night. They were all the way back down in here on this river bottom. And I got back in here, this chunk of timber. I've never been in here before and it just tore up the sign. That is just incredible. No more and got sat down and they hammered right there. I mean, that gets me fired up. That is awesome. Four big gobblers just barreling in. 12 yards tops. I had a good tree to get up next to there. Had a little bit of back cover. It's real thick. Back behind up on this ridge. A little bit of front cover. That drape kind of stands out. It's a little bit darker and everything around it. Probably need to get a lighter brown one, but good job. There's a uh, loss of stake the other day. So here's a stick that's doing the job of holding the decoy up. Hold them right in. Here we are. Oh man, big old paintbrush. Look at that, just a beautiful Eastern, man. Man, I could see those old beards are swinging when they were coming in, holy cow. I was chasing Miriams around in Western Nebraska last week. You used to kind of get used to those wispy little beards. This old Iowa Eastern got a big old rope on him. Man, I mean, it did a number. I mean, it did a number on them. There's the wad right there. Good. Get that cleaned up. Don't want a litter. This guy came in the closest, and they were, you know, they were all pretty well separated. There wasn't anything close to him. There might have been a couple of them that were farther behind him, but you know, at that distance, it, from what I could tell, it was a safe shot to take. But that is, you know, something you got to be aware of when you got a big group of gobblers coming in like that. You know, that's. It was fun to chase these four gobblers around, but I had a feeling, you know, if they all came in at one time to a decoy like they did this morning, that it could be a little bit tricky, making sure you take a, a safe shot, not accidentally hitting two birds. So I know more than got set up. Those birds gobbled. They were, they couldn't have been more than 100 yards away just up on this ridge here, just past that big oak right there. That's where I first saw him. I mean, just, I mean, they were just bearing down on that decoy. Definitely helped having that. All right, I'm gonna pull up on X and do a little measuring here. I'm guessing it's two thirds of a mile from where they were roosted yesterday to where they were roosted this morning. Actually, it's a little bit more than that. Three quarters of a mile from where they were roosted at yesterday. And it's been a lot of fun the past couple of days chasing them around. It was just kind of interesting to keep track of them and you know, kind of see how their behavior changed from day to day and, and throughout the day. Even the difference between the two evenings that I saw them was interesting that, you know, one one evening they were strutting and kind of chasing the, the jakes around. The other evening they were just pale headed and feeding along. Whether the one day it was sunny and probably a little bit higher pressure last night, you know, this uh, little front's moving in, uh, got cloudy. But I think the most interesting thing to me was to see how far away they roosted. So it just goes to show how easy it can be for a spot that you're hunting or a property that you're hunting uh, to go from seemingly loaded with gobblers one day to dead quiet the next day. Because that patch of timber where I hunted them yesterday morning, now granted there could have been something that went up to roost there last night that I didn't know about, but if I hadn't hunted them yesterday evening and seen where they went, and if I would have just went back to that area assuming that they're going to be roosted there this morning, I would have been way out of the game. Now granted there could have been something else in that neighborhood to go after, but they were three quarters of a mile away back on this river bottom in a totally different piece. But it's been a fun couple days here chasing this group of four gobblers. Learned a lot, had some frustration, had some excitement. It kind of got personal after a while. You know, I felt like a couple different times there that I thought I was gonna, gonna get a crack at them yesterday morning. I thought they were gonna crest the ridge and gonna get a shot at one. Then yesterday evening, I thought eventually, you know, surely they were gonna come down to my end of the field like they had done the night before. And as I watched them walk off the field last night, it's like, well, they got the best of me because I, I originally hadn't planned on hunting this morning because there was rain in the forecast and I got a lot of work to get done. But thankfully the rain got pushed off and I was able to come out here for a couple hours and, and caught up with the group and called them right in, decoyed them right in. So thankful, so blessed that you get the opportunity to chase these things around. You know, thank all of you who, who watch and support us because without you guys, THP wouldn't be possible. It's kind of nice 
on a morning like this it's just to slow down and appreciate everything that happened appreciate the gobbler because they they are an amazing amazing animal man are they fun to hunt never gets old absolutely love it